G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're going to have a look at a plane that has been superseded by the F-14 and the Mirage 2000, but still really well holds its own. This is the JA-37C and to my bemusement it sits at battle rating 11.0 instead of 11.3. In my opinion this is an 11.3 jet, Whilst not being on the same level as that of the F-14A and the Mirage 2000, I certainly believe the JA-37 is a very, very competitive jet at the top tier meta. It has six missiles, it's got an excellent radar, and very importantly, its flight performance is very, very good. It has a really high top speed, it can very easily hit 1400 kilometers per hour at sea level, and it can also pull very high alpha maneuvers and continue to do so until the MiG-27 has come along and shit all over it. And that's pretty much the only plane that can really tussle with the uh, with, with the Vigan, unless you're an F-5C and you've managed to sit behind the Vigan, there's very few other aircraft that can really compete properly in a level turning dogfight. The Vigan is one of the best planes at top tier because it just combines a bunch of cool things together and gets the job done very well and very efficiently. You do, as a sort of trade-off, have a lack of flares and chaff. You've only got 32 flares and 16 chaff I'm, I'm bringing with me, and that's normally enough to get a few of the cheekier AIM-9Ls or R-60Ms or a couple of other planes that just won't stop firing missiles off your six while you sort of jet away and get all, this, all, the, all the speed you need. This plane is really good and I've been having a lot of fun with it. One of the things that really I did think about before playing this plane is that this still sees 10.0s being an 11.0 plane. So you do get to shit all over A5s and you also get to shit all over F4Cs and I find this a little bit unfair. I think this plane should definitely be 11.3 because going from sort of top down by looking at the battle ratings above and then judging how it should be balanced is a backwards way of thinking. You can't do that because you'll be causing more harm than good. At the end of the day, there are more planes below than above, especially here at this tier. So using that sort of bottom down approach is kind of stupid. So what am I doing here? I'm going around the periphery like I generally tend to do. I don't like to go straight in because you'll tend to be aim 54 Phoenix food or everyone will basically just swarm you immediately and you'll die. So I'm going to go around the periphery, look for a couple of targets of opportunity, maybe look for some stragglers, look for some AFKs. You can see there are a couple of friendly F-14s using their no brain aim 54 Phoenix missiles and maybe that can you know, put a couple of enemies in a compromising position for me to finish off quite easily. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm just, again, opportunity targets. I'm looking to watch how the match develops and hopefully make a decision based on that. And I have my first victim here. This is the FGR2 looking very juicy indeed. And the F4E has gone head on with him and the F4J as well. And they take the kill. So what am I doing now? I'm essentially diving headfirst into a bunch of enemies, which is a little bit stupid, but the whole end of my team is kind of doing the same thing. We've got a Harrier here, and the Harrier could be a really good target if he didn't yeet himself into the floor. And the F4EJ is also looking kind of juicy here, so I was going to prep a missile. Instead, I'm going to go guns, 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 and the beautiful, I believe it's a 30mm cannon, does a lot of good work. It is pretty punchy. You do need a little bit of time on target, and of course it doesn't come with traces. So it is difficult to aim, but once you get the hang of it, it's really, really good. And I really enjoy using it. It's not quite as high velocity as a Vulcan, but it's also not as sort of shotgunny as a Defa cannon, which makes it in the middle ground of being easy to use and being sort of a little bit difficult to use. The F1C here, I was going to go head on with that, and that was a really stupid idea. So this F1 gets it instead. He's going to go for uh, what I've loaded up, and it seems to be an AIM-9J, but unfortunately for him, guns, 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 just all you'd need. Again, there are a bunch of new enemies that have gotten into the fight. I'm going to get the hell out of here. And it looks like I have been put into a full down tier. There's an A5, and of course the uh, F1 is a 10.3 plane. They don't really belong fighting these. The A5, yes, because it's a piece of shit plane, and if you fly it, uh, you should be ashamed of yourself. But if you do want to buy it, uh, I'll, I'll shamelessly plug the decal link again in the description. That helps the channel out immensely. But, you know, 
maybe maybe buy some golden eagles if you're going to buy that or premium time something a little bit less cancerous than the a5 for sure it looks like he's starting to use maybe he's using some flares yeah a couple of flares here and there but unfortunately a couple of flares is not enough to get rid of an aim 9j because it is just not enough you know you're putting your afterburner in there's this big shiny thing aim 9j's love shiny things and the rb24j which is essentially an aim 9p3 which is essentially an aim 9j is essentially the same thing so we have our last opponent here who is i believe camping at the airfield not really fun thing so i'm gonna go and pop a blind hunt really quick and this is my best friend if i could have a million blind hunts i absolutely would have a million blind hunts because they are just so useful in a situation like this. You can see he is on the airfield. He might be rearming and repairing. Um, and, you know, he's the last guy. If I were in a situation like this, I would I would just leave. I would just J out and uh, go back and cut my losses. So moving forward, we are hovering over the enemy airfield at an altitude of just under 6,000 meters. And we are about to get a radar ping uh, on our RWR. So this means that we are able to go down. I think I can see him. I'm spotting the dot. He's pitching up for me, I believe. And we'll see how the battle turns out because at the end of the day, I just wanted to get a sneaky RB24J kill and call it a day. But he's deciding to pitch up. There's the radar lock. And I'm not going to take a head on with a plane that I could easily fight another way. I'm going to gain some distance. And if he fires some missiles, I'm going to use some flares. And of course, that puts me in enough distance away from the... Uh, the Rolands, the, the, the dreaded Rolands. Now the J7E could potentially fire a missile here and land a hit, but I would honestly just turn around and uh, face my opponent head on where the missile can't really track me nearly as well. So what we're going to do, we've gotten our distance away from the airfield. I've switched the afterburner off to get some more turning ability. I've prepped the RB-71. I've prepped the uh, ACM mode and I'm ready to waste as little time as possible in the head on here. Easy easy kill. You can see how well that missile locks onto the target, and you can see how well the radar locks. It is a happy ending. No problems here whatsoever. So, moving on, we are in a match here against F-14s, and how can I tell it's an F-14? We're getting a very early ping, so this means that we have to play a little Star Wars Canyon run here, and at 1400 kilometers per hour, dodge trees and dodge canyons in a little frozen ice river. That's fine because that keeps me safe away from the hooligans and their AIM-54 Phoenixes. I'm going to peek over the hill here, and hopefully there are going to be no more shenanigans, but honestly, with the F-14s, you can't really trust it. An F-4J zooms right past me, and I'm just not going to go for it, because there are probably targets ahead of me. And this is one of the limitations of the Vigan. We have a 10 kilometer radar, and of course you can switch that to like 300 kilometers, and I might occasionally switch that out to 30 kilometers, as I've done here, for a little bit more viewing pleasure, and that's exactly the play in this case. We're going to look for a little bit more range, but that 10 kilometers is also quite good because it gives your opponents very little time to react to RB-71s. You won't lock early, you won't need to sort of do any stupid stuff, just B below 10 kilometers, when you've got uh, an enemy in your sight and they're heading directly towards you, they're either going to have to pull really hard to get out of the way, do some stupid shenanigans to get out of the way of the missile, or they're just going to have to fully commit to the missile and die, which is the third option that is the most preferable. Now, in this case here, we have an SU-22. He's looking like very, very juicy, very tasty morsel, and I'm just going to climb or sort of come in behind him and wait till close the distance a little bit more. I don't want to fire in at three kilometers. I think that's a little bit far, but we're looking at that sort of 2.7, 2.85, that's about right. And once I've done that, I can set forget and that should land home pretty easily. The RB24Js are very strong missiles, but they do have a somewhat short range. Not as short as the R60s, but it is nowhere near as much as the AIM-9Hs and the AIM-9Gs. So we're just going to sort of have to close that distance there. Now, moving on, we have an F5 and I don't think he's paying attention. So perhaps he's going to repay a repair cost anyway, but judging by the way he's just moved underneath the canyon, he has definitely decided to start paying attention. So I'm going to close the distance here. I'm going to switch the afterburner off to give me a little bit more of a turning ability and try and cut in and go for the guns here because he's hiding around using the terrain and it looks like he's avoided the guns. So I'm just going to piss off and gain some distance. This thing has a really good top speed and I'm going to abuse the top speed, 
get a lot of distance, get away from his aim nines. And then when I'm done with that, get some distance, roll over and engage with the semi-active radar homing missiles. So you see he's popped a missile there. I'm just gonna turn the afterburner off, pop a couple of flares, and that should be enough with the turn. You can see at two and a half kilometers, we've engaged with the RB-71. And this is going to be an extremely easy kill because he is pitched up. There's no speed for him to bleed in, um, into maneuvers. And that is pretty much it. We're looking towards the end of the match here. This is how well this particular match has gone. And whilst I haven't really done a whole lot, we still have some road to cover. The F5 here looking like a juicy target. Again, not paying attention. Opportunity kill here. And it looks like I can go guns, guns, guns. I miss, of course. And this leaves me in uh, a very embarrassing situation where I've missed a potential kill. The SU-22 here looks like he's going to go for a head-on, and it's going to be a very easy situation. Again, in that three-kilometer range, you pretty much have free reign with these missiles if they're going for a direct head-on, and if they don't move out of the way, then you can basically just call that a win-win. So our last enemy here is the F-4J, and he is engaging a friendly F-14, and it looks like the F-14 is going to be struggling here. It's not really that hard to deal with an F4J. You just pop the wings out and dogfight away. But I, I don't know. Either way, helping out a friend gives you a free kill. So I'm going to go for a free kill any day of the month. And the F4J here is no exception. We're going to push in and hopefully get ourselves a nice, easy kill. Whilst this is happening, I'd just like to sort of mention the meta that the vegan finds itself in. Of course, with the M54 Phoenixes, you are left in a lot of the a lot of the time a situation where you can't often get the front foot. You you almost start off on the back foot with the M54s all raining down on you. Sometimes six, eight, or twelve M54s just whizzing above and below. It's really frustrating sometimes, and sometimes you are just going to have to take the L. The F14 is just simply better, and there are planes in this battle rating that are just simply better, but. You, you do have your ability to strike home. You have the ability to deal some damage when the F-14s aren't really paying attention. Again, you can somewhat perform with them in terms of your raw performance, your, your raw dogfighting performance, your raw speed and turning. Yes, you can absolutely deal with them very easily. And that's one of the things that you sort of have to force them into. You have to force them into dogfights. You have to force them away from their tools at hand. They can't just go and, you know, get themselves nice, easy kills. They can have to work for their work for their kill or, you know, work for that repair cost. Because the F-14 is, at the end of the day, still the best plane in the game, meta-wise at least. Perhaps you might have uh, an opinion where the Mirage is a little bit better. And you know what, to some, to, to some effect, I do agree. But at the end of the day, if you're looking at a meta where... You have lots of targets to engage. The targets or the, the plane with more missiles is just going to be better. Quite plain and simple. So in this match here, we are fully down tiered and this is extremely unfair. I think these matches here demonstrate just how unfair it is. The F4E really doesn't stand a chance. And, you know, whilst they're a very similar battle rating or at least very similar in performance and would, in theory, face each other, um, I still think they, sh they should, you know, have a little bit more separation between them just to demonstrate to the community that they are, in fact, uh, slightly different. One is slightly inferior, one is slightly superior. But, you know, that's beside the point. The Vigan is a good plane in a down tier. It is just basically free kills, free money. And you all you have to do is just be careful of the odd Matra Magic, pretty much. And you should be fine. As long as you don't get caught out by dogfighting planes, you will generally have a really good time. But when you are fighting those up tiers, that's probably when you're going to find the most struggle, you know, naturally. And it's not much of an up tier, but it does still, still suck a little bit against the F-14s, which in reality should be 11.7. Uh, I, I think so. And I'm going to do a video sort of outlining all of my thoughts on battle ratings and where planes should sit, uh, because I do think there are some changes that need to be made, particularly at the middle tier of jets around the, uh, you know, the likes of the SU-25K and, and that. But... You know, we can get to that bridge when we cross it. We have an F-104, and that is, again, zero competition to this plane. I don't think it should be facing it. I feel like this is a little bit unfair. And whilst the F-14 kind of shits on this plane sometimes, you don't really want to put this thing against F-4Cs. I, I think that's on the borderline of cruelty, because the F-4C 
is a difficult plane to fly. And now it's just been power crept. So good luck to anyone who wants to try and fly that absolute Chad plane. You are probably going to be shit out of luck. We've gotten that F4C, but seriously, this match doesn't feel rewarding at all. And that's the problem. You go into a match, you get all these kills, and then, you know, it's great, but the matchmaker slowly dies away. And this is the problem that this plane is potentially contributing to. We have an A10 here, which, you know, it should see because the A10 can suck a fat cock, but the particular circumstances that they meet is not ideal. And this is, again, what I'd like to highlight. I admit that these matches are mostly down tiers, or they're mostly matches where I am sort of at some sort of advantage. And this is kind of the way that these matches work. If you are facing a bunch of F-14s, you're not going to have a particularly great time. And especially if the F-14s know what they're doing, they have A, more missiles, B, better performance, very, very slightly. Um, and of course, they've got a wider flight envelope. They have those better IR missiles and they have more flares. So they are essentially an easier plane to fly. But the Vigan still very much holds its own. And it does hold its own, as you can see in uh, the, the first match that I showed. I think that it is sort of, you know, fairly stock standard plane that you can just do your thing in very similar to the mirage 2000 and its capabilities except i think the mirage 2000 has uh, a little bit more going for it in terms of its dogfighting capabilities its flares and of course it's uh raw it, it's it's missiles of course the much magics now our last opponent here is going to be the very worthy su-25 again i believe the su-25 should be at a higher battle rating i will make a video on that plane specifically uh, but you can see here he's just sort of camping at altitude and the vigan is actually struggling to push up that high this guy is truly in space he's at like eight or nine thousand meters um, and i'm just sort of trundling around at 300 kilometers an hour this is pretty pretty damn slow where uh really struggling to to do things at this altitude and you can see that uh, whilst the delta wing is good for aoa that low speed handling and that acceleration at this altitude is really not really cutting it it's kind of struggling and of course the su5 is a straight wing uh su25 is a straight wing plane so it does have an advantage in this case of turning it's just you know not quite the same but at the same time it can potentially get on your six if you're not paying attention that being said, the SU-25 is a pretty poor opponent. It's it's definitely only going to go one way, provided that the F-5C doesn't come in and yoink a kill. Uh, but again, the Vigan is one of those planes that, you know, I think still holds up quite well. There are plenty of opponents that are fairly similar to this, and despite the matchmaker being a little overly compressed, I, I think the Vigan finds itself in a really good situation. I've had plenty of kills where I was able to sort of match a uh, an F-14 in its dogfighting capabilities. Uh, the only plane that I've genuinely struggled with getting this off its off my six is the MiG-27K. That plane is something else, and being able to sort of straighten its wings out and its slightly lighter construction over that of the MiG-23 means that it gives a severe disadvantage to the Vigan in its uh, general dogfighting capabilities. Again, in this case with the SU-25, going back to the footage, we are just sort of getting some distance. I'm keeping an eye out for a mystery missile, and it should only be a moment of time before this plane pops up, and I deal the final winning blow. But again, this match doesn't really feel as rewarding as some of the others. That being said, it is still a, a, a sort of match where the overwhelming feeling here is this is... A down tier and you will see these somewhat regularly in this plane and i have to stress that this is one of the things that makes this plane exceptionally good if it wasn't it would kind of just be you know okay it'd be, it'd be you'd be doable it wouldn't be as bad as like the you know the uh, f-104 asa uh but it certainly would not really be up the very very top you know i, I would probably put it in the top five and we may have to revisit the MiG-23 MLD. We may have to revisit uh, a couple of other planes around this top tier, maybe the EJ Kai, maybe the F-4J. We'll see how we go. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, that will do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. If you guys would like to support the channel, head down into the uh, description below. You'll find merch, you'll find air models links, you'll find the decal link, and of course, you'll find the like button, and that really helps the channel out a lot. If you guys watched to the end of the video, let me know, of course, that feeds the algorithm beautifully. But otherwise, take care.